Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to episode 6 of Jeff and Heather's Dahlia Diary. Every year we grow dahlias and other plants to create a riot of colour that looks at its best in September when we open our garden for the National Garden Scheme. In our diary we are trying to give you a step-by-step -step insight into how we do this. Now I'm sure you're all tuning in uh, because Jeff promised to tell you about his uh, pot tubers in the last episode. So before he starts going on about his tubers, um, I just thought you would like to see uh, the tulips, just to prove to you that we don't just grow dahlias. And I'm Jeff. Now I'm going to be very British and first thing I'm going to talk about the weather. This was a scene that greeted me on the 5th of April. It's been very cold. The, the tulips have taken a hammering. The temperatures in the greenhouse have been below zero and have been having to cover up all the plants with fleece to keep them warm overnight. They've all survived, fortunately. I'm pleased to say that all the dahlias are divided and potted up. Yippee! As you can see, some of the dwarf short-growing varieties have got a little bit leggy because they've been covered up too long. But I think they'll probably be okay. I'm pleased to say that I didn't use, lose any varieties, but unfortunately I'm down to my very last one of one of my favourite varieties called Westerton Ella Grace. I just had the one pot tuber left. I suspect that Westerton Ella Grace is one of those varieties that has a short but beautiful life. There's only one shoot on this particular plant so I'm not going to get the opportunity to be able to take a pot tuber off that so this might be its last year here which is a great shame. Here's Westerton Ella Grace in all her glory. You can see why I don't want to lose her. Which brings me on to the topic of pot tubers. Those of you who watched previous episodes will have seen me taking my pot tubers out of the winter storage and placing them onto trays to get them started. Well, even though it's been a cold spring, the plants are now beginning to grow. Some of them are quite big, like this one. While others are relatively small, like this one. But what they all have in common is that they're all starting to grow. They've all put in out shoots. And so it's just a question of potting them up. There's no need to divide them. And of course, because they're small, they don't take up such a big plant pot and so take up less space in the greenhouse. So here they both are, potted up. And now I've placed them in alphabetical order next to the much larger pots containing all the tubers that I've had to divide. started growing pot tubers about 20 years ago when I grew a variety called Andrea Clark. A very beautiful flower. It grew to about 8 or 9 feet tall, one of the tallest dahlias I've ever grown. But when I dug it up, there was absolutely no tuber whatsoever up there, just a few hairs, root hairs, no tuber, so I, I, there was no chance of keeping it for the following year. The old guy they'd have bought it from explained the theory of pot tubers. Basically a pot tuber is the tuber that's attached to a plant that's been grown in a pot all its life. Basically you take a cutting in the spring, pot it up and leave it in that pot for the duration of the summer. Really you're persuading that plant that it's going to die. You don't feed it, you don't let it flower. And because it thinks it's going to die and it can't flower, then it puts all its efforts into building up a decent sized tuber. So I'll show you what I do. I'll start with the compost that I use. I use a mixture of about one third sand, one third perlite and one third ordinary potting compost. There are no fertilizers within this compost other than the small amount that is in any potting compost usually sufficient for four to five weeks worth of growth. Now is that mixture of compost the right one? Well, all I can say is that it works for me. I know at least one of the top British growers specialises in just using sand for rooting his cuttings, but I like the idea of the compost 
help retaining the moisture so that I don't have to water them so often. So, having got the compost ready, the next job is to take a few cuttings. Now, as I've said before, pot tubers are my insurance policy. So I like to take cuttings of the ones that I'm particularly concerned about, either because I've not got very many, or because I know that they, put, they are poor tuber makers. So this is a, a variety called Home Atland. Now it's not that it's a particularly poor tuber maker. The problem with it is it's got tubers that are about a foot long. They're massive things and they take up a lot of room in the greenhouse. So I'm going to take a pot tuber. They're, the pot tubers are a lot smaller and it, are easier to store. Now there are three stems in this on this particular plant. So because I want to keep the one main stem, I'm going to take a couple of cuttings. Now you might have watched videos of other people taking cuttings and they use a knife or a razor blade to get underneath. They're the, the type of growers who grow for exhibition and, and want lots of the same variety. I only want these two cuttings, so what I do is roll them off. They don't, I don't use a knife or anything that uh, might spread virus. I just use my thumb to roll it off. So here goes. So there's one. And there's a second. So this one can go back on the bench and this is the one that I will use in the garden. Those two I'm going to pot them up to turn them into uh, cuttings. Now before I pot it up into the, into the compost I need to remove the excess stalks there because this area is where the roots are going to come from. So the same with the second one. Take away the excess, any excess flesh around there. Okay, and then it's just a question of getting them into the compost. One, two, remember the label. And there you go. Now those will start rooting in two or three weeks time and uh, eventually I will put them into separate pots and they will go in the ground to be used as pot tubers. Now this is a variety called blackjack. It's a quite a tall grower so I only want the single stem on it. As you can see there are two stems on this. One of them is growing out of the old stalk while the other one is under the compost. I think that the second one, the smaller one, will make a better uh, plant for this year. I'm going to take off the separate one that's on the, on the stalk and roll it off as before. And that will be potted up to root. So here I am putting it into the compost. Now you might wonder why am I not using rooting hormone powder? Well, to be honest, I don't like the idea of breathing it in. I've used it before, it might make a couple of days difference to it when it roots, but I don't see the point in taking a risk. Now here's another one with two shoots, one growing from the stalk while the other one is below ground, probably growing from the tuber. I believe that that one will make the better plant this year and it's better to remove the one that's growing on the old stalk. Again, roll it off. Now to be realistic, that is probably quite a short, a small t uh, cutting. C ideally cutting should be three or four inches tall, but I'm trying to do this now so that I can show you what to do in case you're thinking of taking pot tubers of cuttings yourself. And because it's relatively small, I'm going to cut the excess leaf off to try to reduce transpiration on a relatively small plant. And don't forget to remove the bottom leaves. Another one done. Now here's the perfect candidate for a cutting. This plant of Western Pirates got two shoots and they're both rooting. So I'm going to take one off and grow it as a pot tuber. So here it is, potted up. 
So there we have 12 little cuttings. Once they've rooted the next job is to put them into the pot in which they'll grow for the next few months. This is the sort of pot I use, 3 to 4 inches uh, wide. I like to use square pots because it stops the roots from going round and round and, travel and strangling themselves. I have to admit that because the greenhouse is rather full I'm not going to be potting them up anytime soon. I will leave them in the tray until all the other dailies are out of the greenhouse. I won't have room to do anything else with them. And if you choose to watch further episodes you will see me putting them into the ground. Believe it or not, in this small piece of ground next to the greenhouse I get something between two and three hundred small pot tubers growing. Now, I cannot deny that trying to get everything into the greenhouse at this time of the year is a bit of a logistical nightmare. The greenhouse is already full of dahlias. I've got these seedlings to plant up. You might recall in a, the, the episode in March you saw me uh, See, so in these seeds they are verbena rigida. They've grown a bit faster than I anticipated so we're now presented with uh, something that looks like a tub of cress that you buy in the supermarket. Looks like we're going to have more trays that we're going to have to fit in the garage because they're not going to get in here until all the dailies get out. In fact the majority of my bedding plants such as marigolds, lobelia etc will not get sown until all the dailies have been planted out. Now that might be late May or even June with the cold spring that we've had. In fact that's not really a problem because I'm trying to create a late summer display where everything's out in flower at the same time so embedding plants late is, is a, not necessarily a bad thing. Most annuals have a relatively short flowering season. If you start them early then they finish early and die early if you start them later then they will be flowering later in the summer which is what I want. I'm sure that most of you would be like Heather and think that I've already got enough dahlias. But I don't know about you, I always think that getting something new makes life far more exciting. So I've just got some new cuttings that came through the post. They will have been grown in a warm greenhouse with artificial light probably started off in January or February. They need potting up. In fact I've already potted these up. I was so excited I'd potted them up before I remembered I was going to tell you. I'm going to take these into the house because they're forecasting frost again. When they've had artificial heat they're more susceptible to frost so I'll have to look after them for a bit longer. Sending cuttings by post is a common way to transport dahlias in the UK. This is especially great for new varieties. A grower only needs one tuber and from that can take lots and lots of cuttings and send them across the country. Whereas if the same grower wanted to transport tubers it would take him a couple of years to build up enough stock to have sufficient to send out. And finally you might remember in the last video that there was a dahlia called Cynthia Houston the one I said didn't like getting up in the morning. Well at long last she's showing shoot she's decided to get out of bed Either she smelt breakfast and uh, wants to get up, or perhaps she didn't, just didn't fancy the idea of being chopped up into pieces. That's about it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to show you how and why we take the growing tips out of dahlias to make them produce more flowers. And then Jess is going to be spreading blood, fish and bone all over the place. I'm not sure why he does this, but it makes the whole garden stink and the local fox goes mad. He keeps digging holes, presumably he thinks there must be a tasty chicken or salmon hidden under the soil somewhere. Now I'm sure you're all tuning in because last episode Jeff <laughs> did it wrong. 